The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the June 24th, the marvelous Monday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two-by-four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this, during this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on it at 877-927-6648. If you've got a question and you can't call in, we've got your back. You can send me an email. Send it off to Steve at TFNN.com. Inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Marvelous Monday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Again, we begin our day with a mixed bag. You've got the uh, Dow trading up 378, the S&P 15, Russell 19, Trendy's up 228, New York Stock Exchange up 174. The NDX is down 68 points, three tenths of a cent, one and a half percent for the semis, 88 points, three tenths for the NASDAQ composite. That's a 51 point move. Gold's up 12 bucks. Silver is up six pennies. Lights recruit is up 65 cents. Natural gas up a nickel. And a 30 year treasury is flat, printed out at 119 and a quarter. Our leaders in the clubhouse to the upside, Al Nylum Pharmaceutical, 62 bucks, a 37% move. That's a biggie. Uh, Argenix SE is up 35 bucks, 9%. BlackRock, 15 bucks, 2%. Restoration Hardware, 11 bucks, 5%. United Rentals, 11 bucks and change, nearly 2%. Our shakers to the downside, led by MicroStrategy, off 82 bucks, 5%. Over 5%, Super Micro, 63 bucks, nearly 7%, Broadcom, 34, 2%, Inspired Medical off 24 bucks, 15%, Resmedding, 21 bucks, 10%. We got some shakers out there, but where do we want to begin our day? Well, let's just begin while we're on this black background screen. Where are we at inside that New York Stock Exchange? Advanced decline oscillator continues to work off its oversold condition. Remember, we got down to that minus 150 level out there. Uh, that was back on June the 7th. It's a cool indicator. The advanced client oscillator, folks, very cool to help us identify identify uh, when we get to overbought and oversold conditions. Now, what price is trying to do is get back above that zero threshold level. It's at minus 0 0.9, minus 0 0.1 right now. If it closes the day above that and closes back above it tomorrow, that will tell us that it is the uh, buyers that are in control of the market. That's what it would tell us. So if we take a look at the spot volatilics, it says, I beg to differ with you or may beg to differ with you. Why is that? Well, if we take a look at what it's doing, first it gapped up. It was trading above the 50-day exponential moving average. The 50 days at 13.33. It is now trading just below the 50-day, which is at 13.30. As long as price remains below the 50-day exponential moving average, that gives buyers the edge. Whereas at uh, and, and really, you could get this combined with that New York Stock Exchange Advanced Decline Oscillator closes above its zero threshold level. And man, that would actually say, okay, the TD9 count tops are in place are probably going to get attacked. But we'll take things one step at a time. So you've got the spot volatilics. It's right now in a bullish position. And the uh, New York Stock Exchange Advanced Decline Oscillator is trying to get there as well. Let's go take a look at what's going on on those daily equity future contracts. We'll move over to those white background charts. These are the profiles that I 
I think are the ones that are more accurate, the ones that be paying attention to. And we look at the ES Mini, it's got profile resistance up at 5569. It has profile support at 5493, probably 5493 and a quarter would be where uh, support would be at. Price though, as we speak right now, and this has a TD9 count top, you can see resistance there at 5561. Price is trading above that green oscillator and change line. So its signal to you and I right now is neutral, more neutral than it is uh, bearish. If price were to close below 55.31, then we should see a move to 54.93. If price were to close below that, then we'd be looking at 53.24. If you take a look at the NQ, the NQ is certainly struggling. It has a TD knockout top as well. It has a new profile. The resistance level on that new profile is up at the uh, 23.71 level. The support area down at 19.802. We are trading below that green oscillator and change line. That's at 19.974. If price remains below that level, it increases the odds of a move back to profile support at 19.802. If price were to close below 19.802, certainly for more than two consecutive sessions, then eyes would be targeting 18.941. It's TD Nankout breakout level. Now to the Dow. The Dow has been on a tear to the upside. Price found support at the bottom of its profile. That was back uh, about half a dozen days ago on June the 14th. Now it's June 24th. We're trading above a green oscillator and change line. It looks to me like price wants to go target the 4433 level. At 4433 is a TD nine count breakdown resistance area. In the case of Russell 2000, it's attempting to take out uh, it's a profile resistance level at the 2056 area. A close above that could signal move up to 2082 or 2090. 2090 is where a counter trend move to the upside would find resistance. Therefore, if the Russell 2000 closes above 2090, it says the rally was not a counter trend move and instead price should go target the 2152 level. We'll have to take that one step at a time as well. So that's what's going on. We take a look at the daily equity future contracts. Let's take a peek in on some of the intraday stuff. We'll go to the day trading charts, just daily and other intraday charts out here. So we got Light Sweet Crude. Well, let's take a look at Light Sweet Crude. Light Sweet Crude has a TD9 count top. So here's the new profile that is still attempting to form out here. Yeah, so I, you know, I hate it when when I get different profile levels. Um, oh, that was U.S. dollar index. I thought was taking place. Uh, there is a new profile on my other system. Let me just see where it's at. See if these two match up. I may have spoke out of turn. Sorry about that. You're not seeing it. 79.57. Now we do have two different sets of profiles. So let's take a look at this set here. 81.79 is resistance. Support is down at 71.79. Um, what is price doing? Well, let's look at the intraday stuff out here. Because along the top line, we have nothing but topping patterns. Wave 7, Rosemary Dome Indicator top on the 5-hour chart. Wave 7, Rosemary Dome Indicator top on the 4-hour chart. On the uh, two-hour chart, we've got a Rhodes Mintum indicator top, but price is now, and price trading, this rally has led it into its sell zone. The 120-minute sell zone is between 81.17 and 81.79. On a 60-minute time frame, price is taking out a TD9 count top. Now, that's 60 minutes. Price doesn't close for 45, but if price does close above... If price does close above 81.17, well, then we're likely headed higher. 81.79 would seem to be a likely price target. So you've got a TD9 count top and a daily time frame for Light Street Crude, but it looks like that wants to be targeted. And that's up at that 81.79 level. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. Let's do this. We come back to the break. Let's look at Carnival Cruise Lines, Tesla, EXK, XBEV, and EWH. Of course, I'd love to hear from you as well. Steve at TFNN.com or 877-927-6648. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. 
But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening Call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters Letters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. Hope everybody had a great weekend out there. Good to be with you. We got Game Seven tonight here in uh, here in the Fort Lauderdale area, Sunrise area. So that should be uh, pretty good. Uh, game Seven of the uh, Stanley Cup. In case you weren't familiar with that, uh, last night was pretty cool. We had some uh, soccer major tournament going on down in Miami. We were down not at the game. We were down in Miami, not too far away from that, having dinner. Pretty cool uh, that that's going on. I didn't even know about the game until I actually got back home. And then I got back home, and I was like, oh, my goodness. We would have gone. We would have hung out there for a bit. In any event, that's a Carnival Cruise Line. There's a uh, Fort Lauderdale-type operation, I believe. And uh, so we're going to take a look at this for Gary R. in uh, Benton Harbor, Michigan, part of the Bay City Rollers out there. No, just kidding. And uh, Gary's in some July and October puts. He'd like to add to it. So just watch my take on what the charts are communicating to us at this moment in time. No, I love Game 7, man. I love Game 7s. I, I, I didn't think that uh, I didn't think that Florida would win on a Friday night in um, in uh, in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. Are you kidding me? Those folks live for that. There was no. There would have been a bloodbath, so to speak, if I can say that. If the Oilers had lost that game out there, there's no way that was going to take place. Game seven, may, we'll see if it's a different story. Anyways, back to uh, Carnival Cruise Lines out here, Gary. What I'm going to first do is start with the monthly time frame. What's the bigger picture showing us? And the bigger picture shows us that price is trading above its profile resistance level. That's down at the 1284 level, we're at 1624 right now. It does have a red oscillator and change line. So if it was green, I'd say it's telling us that it wants to rally. Still, though, we're trading above right now. We're trading above last month's high. So that's a bullish condition out there. So you want to keep an eye on that come Friday. Last month's high, by the way. Got to move this away from the wall. Last month's high up at 1624. We're trading right at 1624 as we speak right now. What do we see on the weekly chart? The weekly chart is a consolidation with inside its profile. Now, 
This is a bullish structured profile. And if price closes this week above 1613, again, we're at 16 and a quarter right now, it increases the odds of a move to 1729. So right now the weekly is suggesting we're trading above last week's high. We're very close to it. Last week's high. So here's another number to be paying attention to, 1627. If price starts trading above that, Gary, this could be telling you and I wants to head to 1729. Now, you're looking at where to add to your position. So the first level that I'd be taking a look at here would be 1729. I'm not saying that price is going to get there, but that would be a level to add to it. We look at the daily time frame chart. We see an A to B equals CD pattern to the upside with uh, price target around 1715. And that price actually got up to a high of 1707. Is that close enough to complete that pattern? Let's say that it is. So if it is, then what did price do after that, Gary? What it did was it pulled back and it tested support. And support was the buy zone of its daily profile. So support is held. And now what's transpired as price closed above all of last week, the uh, the uh, top of its uh, daily profile. So it's in a bullish mode out there. So it completed the sell the D point pattern. Price got back and tested support. This suggests that it should continue to move higher. It will especially do that as long as price remains above its green oscillator and change line. That's currently printed at 1623. We're printed at 16. 20 right now. So watch that level at day's end. If price closes above that green oscillator and change line and continues to do that, then I would say that price would go target at swing point. That's a swing point for the trading day of June 6, and that's between the level of 1657 and 1707. Now, Gary's in a short position. If we take a look at the the historical charts, the seasonal patterns, which covers 36 years worth of trading for Carnival Cruise Lines. I'm trying to open this up, believe it or not. There we go. We're not going to put it on the entire screen now. So, Gary, here is the seasonal chart for Carnival Cruise Line. We can see that basically beginning in June, June through October, is when we are in the unfavorable seasonal cycle out there. However, so so I get the tide. The tide itself is going out, so, so to speak, coming in whichever way you want to take a look at it. Um, and uh, so you're trading from a seasonal standpoint in the direction of that tide. However... Um, we use this as more of a guideline than we do of anything else. You're asking where's the next position, where's the next possible place to add to. And again, I'd say in the daily time frame, as long as price remains above that green oscillator and change line, it's on a further rally. And right now I'm just using that uh, swing point high again from the trade day of June 6. So, Gary, that's what I see when we take a look at Carnival Cruise Lines. If I take a quick peek at a 30 minute chart out here, what do we have? Take a quick look. Really, we got nothing. Uh, oh, I take that back. There's a TD9 count top that's in effect from 10 a.m. in the morning back on June 18th. If price closes above that on a 30-minute basis, that being 1627, then what you're going to see is some kind of rally out there. So, Garrick, always good to hear from you. Uh, thanks so much for the request, and I hope this all works out for you, and best of luck. Next request coming in from Panama City, and that is David. And David wants to take a look at Tesla, just wants uh, what the charts, an overview of what the charts are communicating to us. So let's get those charts up on our screen. Now, in this case here, let's start from left to right. Let's start with the smaller time frame. That's the daily time frame. In the case of Tesla, Tesla is trading above. It's green oscillator and change line and its profile resistance level. That suggests it wants to move higher. So where's it moving higher into? Well, it turns out it's got a swing point from back on April the 29th. That swing point, the low of it, is 184.54. So first, David, I would say that a price closed inside there today, it increased the odds that it may want to go test that high, and that high is 198.87. The volume on that swing point was 243 million shares. Look, in today's trading out here in Tesla, what we've done so far is about 35 million shares. Not bad, but that would equate to about 140 million if it kept up this uh, pace out there. And that swing has 243. If price closes back below the low of that swing at 184.54, or at 184. 185.20 right now. But if it closes back below that, you would have a test and rejection of a swing point on lighter volume. Tom likes to say if you can't bust them up, you try to bust them down. Well, where would bust them down be? Bust them down would be that oscillator and change line, at least first. That's at 181.60 and change. If we take a look at um, where it would be the next level to the downside, it would be the top of the profile at 174.84. But right now, what Tesla's communicating to you and I, David, on a daily basis, it is likely to head higher. How about the weekly chart? The weekly chart shows that it has a sell zone. 
And this is where it's going to run into some real trouble on that rally. And that would be between 192.07 and 201.09. It's not that I can't take that level out, but that's when you're going to want to make sure that your feet, your feet, your seat belts are fastened because there could be a bit of turbulence. On a monthly time frame, you have a consolidation with inside its bullish structured profile. That suggests that what Tesla should do is run to the 214 level. Well, heck, it ain't going to do that unless you can get through that uh, resistance zone on the weekly time frame, 192.07 to 201. So on a daily basis, as long as price remains above that green oscillator and change line, I think it's telling you and I that it wants to go target that two, that 192.07 area. So, David, in Panama City, thanks much for writing in, and we'll look forward to your next request. When we come back from this break, we're going to look at EXK, XPEV, EWH, FLNG, and Marvell. Be right back. Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels, you'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns, you'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry Pesavento on Friday, June 14th and Friday, June 28th this month for his live trading sessions, where you'll sit right beside him as he trades the market live. For this month only, enter code LarryJune24 and save $50 off your first month. For all the information and to reserve your spot today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk. So why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Trader's Edge is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Welcome 
Welcome back, folks. So Game 7 tonight, I believe, starts uh, comes on at 8, but I don't think it really starts about 8.15. So as a warm-up, you can go to another version of a Game 7. It's really Game 3. It's the final game inside the College World Series. I don't know if you've caught any of those games out there, but Texas A&M, what a strong team. But but so is uh, Tennessee. So Tennessee came back. They won yesterday's game. I think it was 4-1 to one at the end. But uh, that's a good little uh, good little uh, warm-up to, uh, you know, you got to love games where everything is on the line out there. So I'd watch that too, or I will be watching that for sure at the uh, 7 o'clock time frame. In any event, let's move on to sports over to uh, ticker symbol EXK. This is for Mary Jo. And if we take a look at EXK, I believe the question was, is it overbought? So I don't know how to... Um, I don't really know how to or oversold. I don't know how on a day on a stock to really figure out if something's overbought or oversold. But here's what I can share with you, and that's this. This has a Roachman indicator top. That top, let me get my cursor out here, was confirmed on the trading day of uh, May 31st. It was that bearish engulfing candle that confirmed that pattern? Since then, price has been moving. Uh, you know, been really consolidating ish so to speak, with inside its daily profile. But it has traded below the bottom of that profile on several occasions. Right now, we're trading below that right now. What is that? That is at 366. Price is also trading into a swing point. There's a swing point out here from the trading session of June 13th. And that had 3.5 million shares, about 3.6 million shares. So far today, uh, one, about 2 million shares. So we're moving into that swing point with similar type volume. So I would say this first, Mary Jo, is if price closes today below 362, odds favor that price will go test that low, which is at 344. Now, if price closes below 344, and especially if it does it with volume, then you'd have an A to B equal CD, A to B equal CD to the downside pattern. That would look something like this. I'm not saying this is going to come to fruition, but this is just something to be aware of. Let me copy and paste out here, and then we'll see that that would give you a problem a price target of about 318 now what 318 would do is would be moving into what looks like a breakout candle big day on may the 9th volume of 16 million shares so what this could do if it did take out that low again that low is june 13th then the number is 344 if it takes it out if it takes out with light volume that could set up a tiger gartley out there but right now you're just watching where uh, price trades uh, closes today because if it's inside that swing point from June 13, odds favor a move into it. On a weekly time frame, I do not have a topping pattern. I see an A to B equals CD pattern that has led to a consolidation with inside its weekly profile. That consolidation zone, and price has not gotten down to the bottom of that, is at 331. The top is at 420. On a monthly time frame, EXK is uh, primarily bullish. Primarily bullish in that it has a TD9 count bottom. By the way, the weekly had a TD9 count bottom. And uh, you have price that's trading above uh, its bearish structured monthly profile. Now, the next resistance point on a rally, and I'm not saying we're there yet. Maybe it's just waiting for the daily to get its act together. You thought I was going to say something else, but Stevie doesn't go there. In this case here, um, it would if, if the daily gets its act together, then you should see an eventual price move towards the 420 to 436 level. But right now, it is a daily chart out here, Mary Jo, that is driving this caboose. And let's see if on EXK, if I've even got a uh, uh, enough data to see what its seasonal uh, patterns are typical of this instrument. Well, let's go try that. EXK Probably should have tried that offline. And you're there, Endeavor Silver. So let's go ahead and pull that up. Let's see how many years worth of data we have. That would be 18. That red vertical line, interesting, that red vertical line is where we're at right now. This shows that this typically bottoms right around this time of the year. Wish I could just, what a, man, oh, man, what the heck's going on here? There we go. Now, let's take a look at this. Let me, uh, oh, I did detrend it. So this typically bottoms right around June 26th. Today, tomorrow, the next day, sometime this week out there. And then it typically trades into the end of July before then it creates a fairly decent top that takes us down in towards the December time frame out there. So that's the seasonal pattern. Just be aware of the seasonal pattern, but pay attention to what the daily chart is doing. That's right now the most important time frame in Stevie's opinion in looking at those charts. So Mary Jo, thanks for taking the time to write in. GTE wants to take one of the favorite symbols. 
I don't know if GTE is a man or woman, so I just know it's GTE. And uh, here, oh, you've got uh, XPEV. What is it doing? Well, today it's trading above profile resistance. That is at six. I'm sorry, seven eighty two. And if price closed above 782 today and tomorrow, you will have a profile change in trend. And that would suggest that XPEV wants to rally further. Rally further to where? Excellent question. Stevie would go with $8.60. Why would you do that? Because that happens to be the top of the weekly profile. Don't you like how I just talked to myself? Yeah, sure. I'm sure you do. I'm sure that's the first thing on your list of favorite things that Stevie talks to himself. In any event, we take a look at XPEV. I think it's headed up to that 860 level. I don't see anything on a monthly time frame um, that uh, provides us with any information there. Um, just trading with inside its profile. It has support at 795. Resistance up at 1143. Let's move on to our next request, and that is EWH. Also for GTE, he gets a, a or she gets a twofer out there. So we take a look at EWH. This formed a TD9 count bottom pattern on Friday. Uh, today it is trading higher. It's trading towards resistance. So there's going to be battles. Is this a solid bottom? I don't know. Why? Because price is below two levels of support. One, the bottom of its daily profile. The daily profile level is 1576. Seven. If this is uh, because price is traded below this for two consecutive, this being the bottom of that profile for two consecutive sessions, if it's only a counter trend move to the upside, resistance would be found at 1589. But right now it's the bottom of that profile that is acting as resistance. If price can get above 1589, then you're likely going to move to 1603 to 1614. The weekly chart says, you know what, Stevie? I think this might just be a counter trend move. Why? Well, you're trading inside a bearish structured weekly profile, and we've been below the center of that bearish structured profile for two consecutive weeks. That increases the odds of a move to 1499. But still, it has a TD9 count bottom, and we won't get a move to 1499 unless we see price close below on a daily time frame 1555. That's the TD9 count threshold level there. On a monthly time frame, we have a price just consolidating with inside its uh, uh, monthly profile. It has a TD9 count bottom pattern. The consolidation zone is between 1533 and 1776. So GTE, I hope that twofer was good for you. Ronin inside the Tiger Stead wants to take a look at FLNG out here. So let's go see what Fling is doing. I know that's not what it is. It is um, Flex uh Flex LNG, uh, so liquid natural gas out there. So we're about to go to a break out here. So let's do this, Ronan. When we come back to this break, let's go through the details of what the charts for FLNG are communicating to you and I. We'll be right back. spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. 
Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, uh, folks. We're going to go take a look at FLNG. That is a flex uh, LNG. This is for Ronin inside the Tiger's End. A specific question has it bottom. The answer is... It has bottomed on the daily time frame. It's not one of the patterns that uh, you and I take a look at that, uh, or that I take a look at, you know, the four or five different uh, patterns out there. But what this did generate was a profile change in trend. It did that on Friday. It's got follow through today. Its upside target would suggest a run towards 2907. Now I say suggest a run towards 2907 because I've got to come back and take a look at that weekly time frame. And then that weekly time frame, Ronan, we can see that price was below the bottom of its bullish structured weekly profile for two consecutive sessions. Price is trading with inside that profile right now. So its next area of resistance would be up at 2827. So before we get to 2907, price has got to deal with that 2827 mark. Now on a weekly basis, price must close above 2827 to tell you that this is more than a counter trend move out there. If it can do that, then what price should do is run up to 2993. Do I see a bottom pattern on the um, monthly time frame? You know, the candle formation that is out there could really be a Four River Morning Star pattern. So I'm going to go with yes. Now, what do we have here? We have price trading with inside a bullish structured profile. What you're looking for is 29 bucks even, Stephen. You're looking for a close above that on a monthly basis. If you do get that, that would then suggest to move to 31.42. So let's summarize this chart. First of all, Fling has a bottom on its daily time frame, which referred to as a profile change in trend bottom. We take a look at the weekly chart because price had been below its weekly profile for two consecutive sessions. If this is just a counter trend move, price should find resistance at 28.27. Price should get to 28.27, and then you take it from there. And if price closes above that, then we're off to the $29 level, maybe 29.93. So I hope that helps you out, Rodin, and uh, best of uh, luck to you if you're in a trade here. Uh, uh, Duncan Steve wants to take a look at Marvell, ticker symbol MRVL. And as we look at Marvell, what is it doing today? Well, it has been trading below the bottom of its daily profile, which has tested uh, three of the last maybe six or seven sessions out there. So what it looks like this wants to do is pull back and retest that breakout level of sport at 68.18. The problem there is uh, price never really held that level. Close below it for two days and back above it. So we kind of got, you know, 66.18 is not going to be the best line of demarcation. But right now it looks like that's where price wants to head to, Duncan. If we look at the weekly chart, the weekly chart shows 
that we have a uh, that profile resistance has held, and this formed three weeks ago, and that's at 73.42. We're trading below last week's low. That would suggest to Stevie that price should go target the next level of support. Now, the next level of support on the daily says maybe 66.18, but the weekly says 65 uh, 68.41. So I'd say 68.41 is a very likely target to the downside. If price gets below that, then it's likely going to go target the swing point from back on June 4th. That swing point had volume of a 14 million shares, low at 66.10, high at 67.77. Today you're moving down the volume so far, and this is about 4 million shares. So you got 4 million shares um, going in, and that would be about 12 million. And again, that swing has got 14 million. So it's pulling back, Marvell that is, on some pretty decent volume. If we look at the 30-minute time frame chart, just see if there's anything here that Duncan and I can come up with. Here, what we see is a TD nine count bottom, and that says that if price were to so if price is going to head lower, which it looks like it wants to, the confirmation of that, Steve, Steve, will really come with a close below the TD nine count bottom. So right now, we have to say that is a potential support level. That being 6908. If price closed below 6908, then we're likely headed to those downside targets that we took a look at. Where are those downside targets? Basically, that's 6841 as the next level. So, Steve-O, did that give you the information you were looking for inside of Marvell? I will say that today is also going to be day number two, it appears, of a pullback out there. And uh, so was this in a bull market or not? It's really more of a sideways consolidation than anything else out there. Uh, this typically bottoms after three trading sessions. Last time that it formed a bottom was after two. So two to three trading sessions. So that's something else for you to keep an eye on as well, Dunk. And uh, thanks so much for taking the time to write in. Let's go take a look at ASAN, and that is for Greg. And Greg wants to see if he's interested. He wants to go long, and he's asking, can I purchase it about halfway into Friday's candle out there? Well, it looks like you've got an A to B equals CD pattern on the downside that was confirmed on Friday. That was one heck of a wide-ranging bar. Friday also formed a new daily profile. Now, the daily profile was bullish and structured, so the buy zone was between 11.59 and 11.90. The resistance level was at 12.81. You really want to see price close above 12.81 today because that was also generating a breakout message out there. Well, halfway. Here's what I would say. Is if price closed about 1281, then I think you have to do a couple of different things. First, where's support on the daily time frame? Uh, Greg, that would be at the oscillator and change line. That's currently printed at 1231. That number is going to go up and down by a few pennies or what have you. Certainly go down as price moves lower, should price move lower. So I don't know if that's the halfway point, but that's a level. And because it's red, you certainly want to see price test and reject means close back above it. Why? Excellent question. Because a close below a red oscillator and change line tells you you have a falling price oscillator below zero. And that is a bearish condition. And that would then say your best place to add to your position would be between 11.59 and 11.90. So the first thing to do is watch that 12.30ish that area. The next thing to do is get out some short-term charts out there and see what kind of bottoming signals form as price moves back towards that level. As an example, on a 30-minute time frame, Oh, this is the wrong uh, ASAN. Yeah, Greg. ASAN has a Rhodes momentum indicator top. What price trading with inside its bearish structured profile and below that green oscillator and change line. Where is it that you think price is likely to head to? That's right. 1239. Price is likely to head to 1239 out there. So you're looking for a potential buy area. Well, I'd be watching that 1239. See if there's any kind of pattern that forms down there. Right now you are at bar number five. So this could generate a TD9 count bottom as price heads back to that 1239 area out there. So I hope that helps you out with regard to ticker symbol ASAN. Uh, real quickly here. I don't know why it has to be quick. Just uh, curious. Well, you know, uh, what did I do? Oh, by the way, um, ASAN, here is a seasonal chart for um, for Duncan. Uh, no, I forgot who asked for flex uh, for flex uh, LNG. But here's your here is your uh, here's your seasonal pattern over 10 years. Nine years. Let's get it correct out there. Nine years worth of data. Looks like you just kind of trade sideways for the next uh, couple of months out there in September. Is when it really starts to take off to the upside. Marvell was uh, one that we were also taking a look at. Let me see if I've got Marvell. 
We do. Let's see what its seasonal patterns suggest to you and I. It has a 23-year history. This shows that it typically bottoms right around this week. And uh, like the market, typically bottoms around this week. And it moves higher in towards the July 20th to the end of the month of July out there. And lastly, let's see if we've got anything for ASAN to close out this segment of the show. And the answer is we do not. We do not. Sorry about that, Greg. But hopefully the information I provided to you is good enough to give you a feel for what its charts are communicating to you and I. Folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back. report as a precious metal gold is still king it continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the london otc market the u.s futures market and the shanghai gold exchange the gold report tom o'brien publishes his weekly gold report every monday morning for subscribers consisting of coverage of the xau hui gdx the dollar bonds the south african rand as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at tfnn.com. world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We've got a request from ELO, Electric Light Orchestra, one of Stevie's favorite bands, uh, uh, to take a look at Costco. COST is the uh, ticker symbol, so we do. Thank you, Mr. Bill, for letting me know that I had the wrong uh, uh, symbol up on our uh, seasonal patterns. And this is the uh, seasonal pattern we have 38 years worth of data out there. So we take a look at Costco. Costco typically bottoms right around now, rallies into the uh, July time frame, and then after that rally, it heads lower into the October time frame. If I just put up the S&P 500 right now, let me just put that up just so you get a feel. This is typical of what we 
So what we're seeing in some of these charts are that they are flowing with what the market typically does. So use that seasonal pattern along with this, because here we see that typically we get a bottom right around right now. It's really about tomorrow or Wednesday inside of the S&P 500. That usually leads to a rally into the July 30th time frame. And then, boom, it's a swoosh to the downside uh, where we get that nice uh, Santa Claus rally that typically begins towards the middle or third week in uh, October out there. So now let's go take a look at what the Costco charts are saying. They're, cha they're saying that seasonally speaking that we should be forming a bottom out here. Well, you have Costco on a daily time frame that uh, is there an A to B equals CD pattern to the downside uh, to the upside? Well, if there is, it's not complete because the B point, the only thing you could use out here would be that trading session of May 31st. So let's go with, maybe there's a, even, a, I don't even see a larger one. So let's just go with at this stage here, what we see is price traded with inside its daily profile. In ELO, it's got a buy zone. And the buy zone is between 838.66 and 842.93. If I take a look at a 30 minute time frame, as price was getting back to the buy zone, it was forming a TD nine count bottom. Now, what you'd want to watch here is the oscillator and change on it, 850.49. Why? Because price has been below that since 1300 hours on June the 18th. Today is June 24th out there. If price closes above that oscillator and change line, what you're likely to see is a rally up to 854.99. If price can get above that level, you're looking at 859.34 out there. Uh, real quickly, is there anything else that I see inside of Costco? Bullish on the weekly time frame, but it is going to go ahead, likely going to go ahead and form a TD9 count at the end of the week. But the monthly says, I don't have any clue what you're talking about. It wants to continue to rally. Folks, stay tuned for all the great programming. Thanks for joining me. I'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow, 11 a.m. sharp. Take care. Be safe out there.